All right, guys, this is a video I've been planning to do for at least a couple of years, two years, but I wanted to make sure I'm 100% ready to do it. I uh, wanted to make sure I covered a lot of ground with a lot of different fragrances from my favorite perfumer, Dominic Ropion. So today, I've got 20 fragrances, favorite fragrances, all created by Dominic Ropion, and it's for ranked video. So from my least favorite to my most favorite, coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Yesterday I'm talking about my favorite perfumer. I should say probably one of my favorite perfumers, but I think he's up there. He's way up there. And I feel like his fragrances are some of my favorites uh, as far as uh, the way he creates uh, fragrances. And I've been planning this video for a good two years and I wanted to make sure I cover a lot of ground uh, with the different uh, brands and things like that. So I've been compiling fragrances. And also I wanted to make sure it's a 20, a top 20, because there are some perfumers that are around for years and years and years and I don't want to just stop at a top 10. I wanted to make sure I include a lot of different fragrances. Some of the classics are not here and I'm going to let you know what they are before I start the countdown, um, the ranked list, but uh, uh, it's mostly the, about the ones that I've got here in this collection. Uh, one other thing I should mention, I am planning on doing a separate Frederick Mall Dominic Ropion created fragrances video. And even though I don't have every single Frederick Mall fragrance that he's created, I've got a good seven, I think. So I'll do a separate video uh, on those fragrances very soon. And in this video, I'm only featuring three Frederick Mall fragrances that he's created, not all of them. I wanted to make sure I cover enough uh, brands. And then also, there's Costume National here, who he's done fragrances for, and I've only got two fragrances from that house. But before I get to everything, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So I want to also let you know, one of you guys mentioned it would be a great idea for me to flash a photo of the perfumer that I'm speaking about. Well, I'm going to flash a photo of a book that is all about Dominic Ropion and that'll include his photo right there. So this is a great book. Anyone interested in uh, understanding uh, about Dominic Ropion? Recently I did discuss this book in my review for Vanna Gloria, one of the latter fragrances he's created, which I'll get to in the list, in, the, in my rank list. But a great read here. Uh, it's uh, not very complicated. It discusses his process, everything, and his most famous creation, Portrait of a Lady, has its own chapter. And in the end of the book there are, you know, famous fragrances that he's created that are highlighted. This is a book created by Nay Magazine, or the periodical uh, perfume uh, book. I think it's more of a magazine, but uh, I think um, if you like that magazine or a periodical, you definitely enjoy reading this one. Even though it doesn't have a lot of uh, photos, the photos are mostly illustrations in the back, uh, you'll still see uh, some of his uh, creations and of course a lot of details about how he does his creations. Anyway, that's a great book for you to check out if you're curious to learn about this particular perfumer. But I want to also let you know some famous uh, or more classic fragrances, some discontinued, some around, some I've worn, some I've given as gifts to my mom, not even knowing who Dominic Ropion was at, at the time, dating back to the 80s and 90s, even the 2000s, because I first discovered his fragrances in the early 2010s. But some of the ones he's created are Givenchy Isatis, Ralph Lauren Safari, Crazy Crizia, Givenchy Amarige, Dior Dune, Escada Casual Friday. Now Casual Friday was one of my favorite fragrances. I wore that in the late 90s. It was so, so good. I think it was also in the early 2000s I wore that. I think it was not the late 90s, so, somewhere around there. But a great fragrance. And then I, I gave my mom a Givenchy Amarige because I love the way that fragrance smelled. Uh, a woman used to wear it in a photo um, class I took, a, a lab, like in a dark room lab class I took and I would be, you know, 
processing my photos and she'd be walking around with her Amarige and I could smell it, you know, and I had to ask her what it was. I gave a bottle of that to my mom. Armani Aqua de Joya, Cicely Soir de Lune, Alexander McQueen, My Queen, Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb, Cacherelle Amor Amor, Calvin Klein Euphoria. Also, one more thing, two new Costume National fragrances are coming very, very soon. As I said, I have two featured in this video. He's created a fragrance called Super Gloss. Uh, for Costume National, a brand new one, and then there is a Parfum version of Costume National Homme, which I've been dying to um, get, uh, but I have not been able to get my hands on. One more thing before I move on to the list. Earlier on here, maybe around 2014, 2015, maybe it's 2015, there was a brand that launched called Orlov Paris with a bunch of different fragrances. I think they launched with five or six fragrances. All of them were created by Dominic Ropion. I love them. Star of the Season was great. Great, great scent. But what I don't know what happened was they redid the, all the fragrances and they relaunched the fragrances with new perfumers. I don't know what the heck happened to the brand. I know the brand is still around. They kind of like slowed down a bit and they've launched a bunch of new fragrances, but I don't know why that happened. Why did Orlov Paris launch five or six fragrances created by Dominic Ropion? Then all of a sudden they got all redone and they relaunched the same fragrances with the same names with different perfumers and different notes. Confusing stuff for me. But we're going to start off with number 20 and before I tell you what it is I'm going to let you know that there's unisex fragrances here, male targeted fragrances here, and feminine targeted fragrances. I'm ranking it as one list all equally of how much I like each one and uh, of course uh, from 20 to, to, to number one. But the first one I'm talking about is Kenzo Jungle Le Elephant, this one right here. This was a recent pickup. I picked it up along with uh, Kenzo Por Om, Jungle Por Om. And I much prefer Jungle um, Por Om over J Jungle Elephant. I know Jungle Elephant has a lot of fans and it is a very spicy concoction. I think uh, this is probably like a, a training ground for him to create the, the spicy masterpiece of Portrait of a Lady. But if you have never smelled this one, it's from the mid-90s. It's cardamom, heliotrope, cloves, mango, ylang ylang, licorice, and vanilla. It's a great scent. Kind of rubs me the wrong way a bit, and it's not one of my most favorites of his, so that's why it's at number 20. So the next fragrance I'm talking about is from the house of YSL, and it's a co-creation with two other perfumers and Filippo or and Flippo and Pierre Wargnay, I think that's how you say his name. This is YSL's La Nuit de la Homme at number 19. I think it's a great fragrance. I've worn so much of it. I think it's better than the original YSL Loam, which kind of smells boring and uh, watered down now. This has actually been kept and I like it because it's a great spicy aromatic uh, fragrance and woody uh, as well. Lots of cardamom here. You can totally smell, smell the cardamom. I featured this in a cardamom fragrances video. There's lots of lavender, cedar, vetiver, caraway, and bergamot. Definitely a great scent, but it is designer and I left it in the bottom uh, of the list uh, because I like some of the other ones a little more. So YSL La Nuit de la Homme. I never knew that this was created by Dominic Ropion. It was surprising that he created and, and, and along with a few other people. The next fragrance I'm going to talk to you about is from the house of Boucheron. This is Oud de Carthage, this one right here. Now this fragrance kind of reminds me of another fragrance he's created here and before I talk about this fragrance I want to let you know that uh, some of the things uh, his styles show up. He's done, he does some great ouds. He does also lots of white flowers that are perfect and he also does spicy really really great. So those are kind of his trademarks. This is one of the first ouds that we're talking about. It's a kind of a warm, spicy, ambery oud kind of a creation, but it also features lots of leather here. So oud leather, tonka beans, labdanum, honey, incense. So the labdanum and honey together creates an amber accord. There is a light smoky touch running throughout it. There's of course the leatheriness and then of course the oud in here as well. It's a solid release, but it reminds me of another one that I have and I think I prefer that one just a little more than this but you might check it out if you don't know it. It is available at discounters and it's a great looking bottle as well. Oud de Carthage from the house of Boucheron. And the next fragrance I'm talking about is from the house of Stark Paris. He's actually created two fragrances for this house. This is um, the only one I have. Poit de Soie is the name. And this is a musky, slightly animalic, powdery, woody fragrance. If you like powdery notes, non-distinct powdery notes here, but it's contrasted with lots of woods, so you can kind of get the powdery dusting of woods as well. And then of course the musk and the animalic notes. Very underrated house, Stark 
Paris is a house for uh, Philippe Stark. He's a um, interior designer, uh, I believe, and this is his fragrance collection. There's like five or six different fragrances in the collection, and this is uh, the one created by one of the ones that's created by Dominic Ropion. That was in the initial launch. Last year they they launched another fragrance that Dominic Ropion created as well. I haven't been able to get my hands on it, so I don't know what that smells like. So this is a great powdery, musky, woody fragrance. Lightly animalic if you want to check it out. Stark Paris Peau de Soie. The next fragrance I'm talking about, and we're gonna get into the floral direction, White Flowers. As I said, he does great white flowers. This is the first of many that's gonna come up. This is Penhaligon's Heartless Helen. Tuberose, Woods, and Mandarin Orange is what they credit for this one. And it's basically that. It kind of wears a simplistic. You definitely experience lots of tuberose. It's definitely woody, so it's a nice contrast of woods and white flowers. And then there's that kind of sweet orange, citrusy orange running throughout it, a mandarin orange, that kind of like contrasts with both of the notes. It wears great. I think you can get away with wearing a lot of the white flowers I'm going to talk to you about today in the heat of the summer. And this one, since it's not overly complex, although the woods might get a little dense, I think you can still get away with um, wearing it in the summertime in the heat. And there's also a little bit of a spice running throughout this one that they don't credit uh, what it is. Uh, I believe just contrast of the different uh, notes together creating a chord. So Penhaligon's Heartless Helen at number 16. The next one I am going to talk to you about is from the House of Armani. This is Orangerie Venice, this one right here. A great citrus, but I think it's a citrus fragrance compared to other fragrance styles here it kind of falls under a little bit like a lower in the list but still a very very solid release i just had to kind of rank this list in a way that this ended up getting to the bottom but i bought this when i first smelled it did i buy it when i first smelled it i smelled it in in the south of france uh or a late um uh, in, in late summer, early fall, and it, it was really hot, and in that heat, it was really, really beautiful on me. And it has lots of citrusy touches with bitter orange, neroli, lots of citruses, bergamot, bouchou, ambroxan, oak moss, and cedar. So it's, a, it's an overdose of lots of sparkly citruses, very refreshing and uh, effervescent, but it also has that ambroxan uh, note in here and the moss. I think it's a it's solid release. It's just a, a sad that I had to put it here, but I couldn't move it up any further. But but definitely check it out. It's not one of the more expensive um, uh, Armani Privé fragrances. So I think it's around $175, $180 for 100 ml. Still pricey, but uh, you might be able to get discounts or deals on this one. So that's Armani Privé Orangerie Venice. So this next one is a male targeted release. We started out with a spicy feminine targeted release. This is a spicy male targeted release. Going to the House of Costume National, and this is Costume National Ohm this way and I'm anticipating that parfum version of this I have not been able to get my hands on it but this is a great great creation from Dominic Ropion he does spices really well as I said he does white flowers very well and uh, you know he's got he's got ouds and ambers together as well so he does those styles very well but there are some things here that are not in those styles and I'll point them out to you guys this is definitely the spicy style and it's a great masculine offering but to me I think this can go unisex totally can go unisex as cloves, cinnamon, cardamom, grapefruit, bergamot, sandalwood, labanum, thyme, patchouli. I also get like fruits in here, dried fruits. I also get tea. So the combination really, really works wonderfully. It's ambery, but very spicy. Kind of think of holidays, kind of think of chai. Not milky, just the spices with uh, tea and things like that, with fruits and things like that. Really delicious fragrance. Costume National Ohm, a great men's uh, release from Costume National. All right, this next one is going to the house of Juice Box. It's Beat Cafe. And if you guys didn't know already, Juice Box and Costume National are sister companies, uh, just so that you know, uh, if you, in case you didn't know. And obvious that uh, he's created, Dominic Ropion has created many fragrances uh, for Juice Box and also many fragrances for Costume National as well. But this one's a boozy experience with tobacco and it kind of falls in line with fragrances like Jazz Club, Cigar Rum, Pavillon Rouge. If you like fragrances like that, you're gonna like this one. But this one I find to be having a lot of more of a woody consistency along with the, the boozy touches of cognac and then of course the t tobacco. So this one features lots of tobacco, cedar, 
benzoin, cognac, leather, labdanum, black pepper, coriander, vetiver. So you do have spices. You have lots of woods here. The cedar is prominent. The booze and the tobacco definitely, definitely show up. And it definitely has ambery touches as well. Great scent. Beet Cafe from the house of Juicebox. Check it out if you don't know that one. Now this next one is more of a recent love. I decided to pick it up because it is created by Dominique Rupion for Lalique. This is Lalique Le Parfum, this one right here. Delicious. If you like vanilla, you will like this one. And even though this is a feminine targeted fragrance, uh, there's vanilla fragrances out there that are unisex targeted. And I could say this is, uh, take it out of this bottle, put it in that bottle that's unisex targeted, and it, you would think that it's that fragrance. Because it reminds me of some other really delicious vanilla fragrances. But this one has more of a green touch running throughout it. So La Ligue Le Parfum features vanilla, tonka beans, sandalwood, heliotrope, West Indian Bay, pink pepper, almonds, jasmine, patchouli. The West Indian Bay kind of gives it a greenish touch. Not a lot, a little bit. You'll definitely notice it. It's nicely contrasted with the vanilla. But there's also this uh, nutty touch with almonds in here. There's also the heliotrope. So you do have a kind of a light uh, contrast of almondy touch from the heliotrope and powdery uh, in contrast with the vanilla. Very, very delicious. And as I said, if you remove it out of this bottle and put it in a unisex bottle, you'd think Oh, I could totally wear that. But anyway, it's really delicious. A great vanilla from Lalique. Uh, it's Lalique Le Parfum. The next one, going to another white floral fragrance, the house of uh, Yves Saint Laurent. This is Supreme Bou Bouquet. And Supreme Bouquet is a tuberose fragrance. And you know, it does remind me of another fr fragrance that he created. And I'll let you know a little bit about it. But this one features loads of tuberose, amber, ylang ylang, woods, patchouli, pink pepper, bergamot. It lightly hints at Frederick Mall's tuberose fragrance, carnal uh, flower. But they're different. You know, it, they're, they're different. The, the carnal flower has more of a tropical edge. This one has more of a woody amber uh, experience so there's differences but the tuberose that he's used here and he's used in uh, Frederick Mall's carnal flower remind me of one another but a gorgeous fragrance this might be a little more heavier woods and amber to wear all year round when it's hot but I think it's a gorgeous tuberose that's why it's here at number 11 this is uh, YSL's uh, Supreme Bouquet from their Le Vestiaire collection and this one I pulled it out because now they're selling it online again I thought it was for the longest time discontinued or just not available. Chopard Oud Malaki, a great, great oud fragrance designer, but wonderful oud with ambery touches. It's, it smells fantastic, but it also has tobacco and spices in here. Oud, tobacco, spices, leather, woods, ambergris, grapefruit, lavender, artemisia. And this is the fragrance that it reminds me of one another. They're different, but then, you know, they do remind us of one another. Um, this one came up much later than this one, but I think this one has lots of fans and it's definitely solid designer oud fragrance that has spices and tobacco and kind of ambery touches. I recommend it. Chopard Oud Malaki. A great one. I, I think I might have to buy a new bottle. As you can see, it's kind of low. But I kind of want to explore all those Malakis that are available from uh, Chopard. All right, we've got the white flower section of the video. We've got three uh, white floral fragrances back to back. The first one I'm going to talk to you about at number nine is Mugler's Alien. I almost put Alien Oud Magic Stowe, which Dominic Ropian also created, but I went with the original here. I like both, and if you like Alien and you want kind of an oody touch, uh, you should try the Oud, Alien Oud Magisto. But Alien has been very, very popular, although he created this fragrance with another perfumer by the name of Laurent Bruyere. Jasmine, Amber, and Wood. Basically, that's what the notes are credited. You do get some spices in there, lots of Jasmine. Amber is definitely prominent here. It does settle to an ambery, woody base, but a pretty intense fragrance for when it was first launched. And it, it's got a following. It's kind of like the anti angel from Mugler and I think this might be this might be the most popular n uh, not the most or it could be now I don't know uh, it used to be like the second most popular I'm not 100% certain how popular angel is anymore the original angel uh, because that generation of women that wore that have gotten old so I don't know if the new generation has embraced it I feel like this is a little more modern in comparison to something like uh, Mugler's uh, Angel. But either way, I think this is very popular. A lot of folks like it. If you like jasmine fragrances, definitely check this out. And I'm kind of obsessed with jasmine lately. I really, really love jasmine and fragrances, and I really do enjoy this one from uh, Mugler. Alien at number nine. This is one of three uh, Frederick Mall fragrances 
carnal flower. As I said, we're kind of in a section of white floral fragrances. And this one does have a tropical kind of edge. Not too much. I think there's a pretty prominent coconut note in here. So it takes me to a, kind of a tropical territory uh, of a fragrance. Whereas this one goes ambery and uh, woody in the base. This one doesn't as much. And this one becomes, you know, more easy to wear. It's fresher, but very substantial also. It's not like a light wimp or anything like that. But Carnal Flower has loads of tuberose, eucalyptus, jasmine, coconut, orange blossom, ylang ylang, melons, white musk, and bergamot. And it's got loads of different uh, white flowers and they work beautifully together. Tuberose, jasmine, orange blossom, fantastic combination. But there is that coconut, as I said, and that fruity uh, melon note. Wonderful fragrance, Carnal Flower at number eight. The next fragrance, I'm surprised how much I'm enjoying this one. It's a recent pickup. This is Jasmine's Marzipan from Lancome. It's obsessed with jasmine. And this one smells fantastic. You know, I get more jasmine, less almonds or marzipan kind of, um, you know, wood. It's supposed to be almonds and uh, woods together. But I don't get a much of a, a gourmand touch with this one. It's more light gourmand with uh, two types of jasmine, jasmine sandback and uh, your traditional jasmine. But jasmine sandback, jasmine, almonds, wood, musk, bourbon, vanilla, cashmere, wood, sandalwood. So yeah, it is gourmandish, but for me, it's not so much gourmandish. It's more just jasmine. And I'm really, really digging the jasmine in here. Some folks said recently that this is a, a reformulated version. I'm not sure what they've done because I'm just digging into this Lancome house now and I'm liking what I'm smelling. So the issue with the, this particular scenario is if you didn't know what a fragrance smelled like and you like something in its current formulation, you have nothing to compare to. So I can't really compare to anything, but I'm digging this one. That's why it's at number seven, loving the jasmine in here. So this next fragrance is definitely not anything that I've discussed in this particular collection of uh, fragrances. It's a different style. This is from the house of Olfactive Studio. It's Violet Shot. Oh man, it's so good. This is so good and it's become one of my favorite Olfactive Studio fragrances. And obviously uh, in the top six here for my favorite Dominic Ropion fragrances. And what he's done here is violet leaves, also violets with green grass, vanilla, patchouli, labdanum, mandarin, pink pepper, saffroline. If you like fragrances like Fahrenheit Le Parfum without the leather, you might dig this one because it's lots of ozonic violet leaves, violets note contrasted with vanilla. So it's a sweet kind of gourmandish violet fragrance that's to die for. You can smell the violet leaves. You can smell the violet flowers. There is a little bit of a violet candy-like smell in there. Uh, but then there's a vanilla and it's just a beautiful combination. There is a watery touch. Ozonic fragrances definitely have the kind of a watery, liquidy consistency when you're wearing it and you do experience it here. But it's really, really fantastic. Glad to have this here and glad that it's a different style uh, other than the, the white flowers, the ouds and ambers, and the spicy fragrances. So, Olfacta Studio Violet Shot. Check it out if you don't know it. I think it's really, really great smelling. Now it's top five time. At number five, we're going to the house of a lab on fire. What we do in Paris is secret. You know, I love gourmands. This is a perfect gourmand. It's a nutty tonka beanie gourmand with fruity touches. And if you don't know this one, go check out my review for this. It's tonka beans, honey, lychee fruit, heliotrope, vanilla, tolu balsam, amber, bergamot, and rose. Rose is very light. There is ambery touches here, definitely honeyed, and of course, uh, fruity. And the combination is like a, some kind of a dessert. The heliotrope also comes in, gives it a, a nutty almondy touch so it definitely also gets powdery so it's a nice fusion of powdery gourmand with syrupy gourmand together very very delicious and it's here at number five a lab on fire what we do in paris is secret check that out i think you're gonna like it if you don't know it although this bottle is not changed the brand is changing all their bottles this is like the third time they're changing bottles i'm just realizing now for the first time yeah i think from what i remember the very first time i wore uh, a lab on fire's uh, you know, what we do in Paris is secret. It was in a different bottle. Then we got these bottles and now they're doing more uh, different bottles again. I don't know. 
Anyway, maybe they're just not consistent and they want to make them all consistent. Either way, at number four, it's Costume National Soul. Wonderful fragrance created by Dominic Ruppian. I love this one. Probably uh, one of the better ouds that's ambery. So Soul features oud, leather, ambergris, cardamom, pink pepper, vanilla, patchouli, geranium, bergamot. So it's an ambery experience with lots of ambergris. So there's like light animalic touches in here. There's leather, of course. And then the oud is the most uh, prominent note. There's spicy touches that come in and then vanilla sweetens it up. You do experience the patchouli in here as well, which is a nice contrast to everything else. I love this one. Soul at number four from the House of Costume National. The next fragrance we're gonna talk about is the most expensive fragrance. It's Frederick Mall's The Night. So as I said, I have three Frederick Mall fragrances and two from Costume National. There's so many Frederick Mall fragrances, I had to include three. But as I said, I am doing a separate Frederick Mall Dominic Ropion video. But The Night is one of the ultimate oody experiences. Animalic, intense, uh, overdose of uh, animalic touches with oud. It's oud, Turkish rose, amber, what the notes are. There's a skanky touch under here, but it's beautiful, really, really beautiful. It wears beautiful, lasts a long, long time. Uh, you've got to dig the oud, uh, though. You really, really, you must dig it. Otherwise, you're not going to like this one. But it is really, really beautiful. It is, to me, like a oody animalic version of portrait of a lady minus like the fruits and um, too much of the spices and the patchouli if you like that idea check this out but as i said it is pretty pricey the night is at number three guess where vana gloria has ended up at number two i really really love this creation from dominic Ropian. i really do it's vanilla after all but a nice contrasty vanilla with lots of incense. It's almost like vanilla incense fighting together to see who comes ahead, comes out ahead. Vanilla wins, but the incense is so, so close here. So you gotta like that combination. It's loads of incense and olibanum with vanilla. So, you know, you've got the smokiness, you've got the resinous touches. There's some tonka beans, saffron and musk. It does have light aromatic leathery touches, but mostly I'm getting here vanilla and incense together for a match made in heaven. That's number two, Vanna Gloria. Can you guess my number one? I think you already know if you know me, right? You do know me, right? <laughs> this is uh, Portrait of a Lady, number one. It's, it's, it's what really got me excited about Dominic Ropion's fragrances. It's a masterpiece. I think he's created a masterpiece and last year they celebrated 10 years of Portrait of a Lady. Smells fantastic. Great combination of lots of roses with patchouli, raspberries, uh, spices, incense as well. Some sandalwood and ambery touches in the base, but it wears beautifully on me. It garners compliments, lasts a long time, and one of the best smells I've ever put my nose on. That's why it's at number one. I mean, he, uh, he creates great fragrances. As I said, I think he loves to do spicy fragrances with ambery touches, uh, oody fragrances with ambery touches, uh, of course white flowers as well, so um, great, great um, uh, perfumer. So anyway, Portrait of a Lady is uh, my number one favorite fragrance and that's my list. Anyway, how would you rank this list if you were to rank this list or give me your top five Dominic Ropion fragrances. I'd like to find out what you like of his. If there's anything that I missed, which obviously he's created so many fragrances, he has not created all great fragrances. Some of the fragrances uh, I don't care for personally, like some of the more designerish ones, or some niche as well, uh, but definitely these are great. But let me know what your favorite Dominic Ropion creations are. I'd love to find out, and what other great Dominic Ropion creations I should check out. Put a comment down. Anyway, guys, appreciate you tuning in today to watch this top 20 Dominic Ropion fragrances video. Stay tuned for the Frederick Mall version of Dominic Ropion fragrances, as there's more and I have them here. Uh, other than that, please like this video, please share it, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. <music>